10th of May, welcome everyone. We have Cleo Zoas from the Warehouse Group and Sharon Martin from Jade Software joining us today. But before then, a few items of interest. I'll keep putting this in front of you. I said it the last time I did one of these, 24th of November, put it in your calendar. We finally get around, hopefully, to doing a tech summit this year. We didn't last year. This is a fairly rough um, screenshot from the Kitai Learning Days website. This is on right now, this week. Whoever is unmuted, can they please mute themselves? Thank you. So there's a bunch of really interesting events going on this week. Please check out their website to see what's there. There's a, several things on the theme of digital equity and the like. And many of them of interest to a Canary Tech audience. And next week is Tech Week, uh, 16th, 22nd of May. There's a few events locally. There's a heap of events online nationally. Uh, I think there's in, in excess of 300 or something. So there's a huge number to choose from. I'm sure there's something for everyone. Please take a look. Of And this is one that Canterbury Tech is putting on. It's We've done these the last two years or something of this sort of nature, looking at pathways into tech careers for students. Um, so this year we have three young uh, technology professionals talking about how they got into tech what their companies do and what they do during their working days. So uh, if you have school age kids or connections into local schools, please um, draw attention to this, it should be really worthwhile. And it's, it's online only, so low barrier to entry. Some other stuff going on, mentor walks, I think it's uh, Sequent has been behind bringing this to Christchurch Electrify Aotearoa. I know I was talking to Marion Johnson from Ministry of Awesome a couple of days ago. This has been planned for a couple of years, so it looks as though it's finally going to happen in a couple of weeks' time. They're close to sold out, um, so you might bag a ticket if you're lucky. And look, there's some other events. There's quite a lot going on at the moment, heaps of uh, events and organisations going back to uh, in-person events. Now, before that, actually, Canary Tech is, is following that trend. So our, uh, these lunchtime tech sessions have been fortnightly for the last two or maybe three months. We are almost certainly going to hold an in-person event in June. You know, ordinarily, our events are the first Tuesday of the month, so that would be the 7th of June. But uh, we have some people in town on the 8th and we're proposing to run it on the 8th you'll see more about our theme and venue and so on probably later this week but an initial heads up 8th of june in person looks that way and i'm also going to give a quick plug before i forget for the next one of these lunchtime sessions in a fortnight's time which will be with greg garrett from medimap one of our quiet achievers i'd call them in in the local med tech sector so that's in two weeks time meanwhile we have the pleasure of uh the company of cleo and sharon uh and i'm going to hand over to them cleo zoas from the warehouse group and sharon martin from jade software over to you guys and claire maybe you want to take care of the spotlighting fantastic thanks so much for having us Neil. uh Got a bit of an echo there, if you might need to sort that out. Me too. I need to. Just got a bit of a uh, sound issue, whatever we've done there. Is that better? Yeah. That's gone now. Cool. Firstly, I'd like to welcome Cleo Zoas, who is Product Portfolio Manager from the Warehouse Group. Cleo looks after some of the core ERP applications for the group. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Sharon from Jade, and it's my job to look after the relationship between Jade and the Warehouse Group, one of Jade's biggest and certainly most important clients. So welcome, everyone. 
just to give you a bit of context and a bit of background as to what happened um, or why we're here really to talk to you today. Uh, we've been doing some pretty exciting uh, things with the Warehouse Group and in the latter part of last year, the Warehouse Group and Jade worked together to flip the existing development team to an agile way of working. Now, to put that into context for you, this team had been working in Waterfall for more than two decades so it was a really massive change for everybody involved. So the purpose of this session today is to take you through the process that we went through. Not only did we change the ways of working, but we also scaled up the team from four to 18 people. So it was a massive spike in effort as well. We also doubled the number of deployments and managed to protect the existing pipeline of work in the process. So how did we do it? Well, Cleo, if we just jump back uh, for everyone on the call, what is the purpose or what was the reason that the warehouse group wanted to do this in the first place? Why did they do it? Good. Hi, Sharon, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so the warehouse group flipped to Agile as a way of working to be more responsive to our customer needs. The process worked well and we wanted to take our partners with us on the journey so that our ways of working are aligned. So flipping to Agile has removed our long lead times, brought the Jade development team closer to the rest of the IS team and made us more responsive to the high value things we need to deliver. We recognized that there was a lot to be done in our business roadmap. And we needed more than a small team to get things done. So we split the team, we got two technical leads and then split the team and then hired the best people to work, um, to learn the agile ways of working with us. Yeah, and that's great. It's not only because those people, they not only had to learn agile, but they also had to uh, get up to speed really quickly with the actual system knowledge. So there's a huge amount of learning going on. So what we did was we asked the existing people to uh, share their knowledge and skills, do some massive knowledge transfer, while they had to get on with their own jobs in the meantime. So it was a very stressful time. But uh, what came out of it, you know, previously we were doing deployments uh, about six times a year and moving to Agile meant that we uh, went fortnightly sprints or to uh, four weekly sprints. So essentially we have a new deploy every month. So quite a fantastic transition. But in terms of the how, Cleo, can you just give us a bit of information about how you approached this massive change? So firstly, we took care of the people. Then we worked on changing our mindset. 20 years of waterfall is a lot to kind of switch to. And then we made a plan. So we started with this team, got the people together. Um, some of the people had already worked together before, so they knew their strengths, weaknesses, and habits. But we needed to keep the business running and also work on our strategic goals. Um, so we had the two technical leads and the team, and then we started with a retrospective. And then so much as what had worked and what had not worked in previous things. And it was great to see the diversity of opinion coming through and really leveraging on everyone's previous experiences. So it was it was really great to bring the teams together in that way. Yeah, and in a really short period of time, we brought on these extra people, shared all this knowledge, worked through the plan, and got everybody working uh, in an agile fashion within a couple of months, which is a massive achievement, really. Because when you think about it, these systems are mission critical to the business, isn't that right? None of these can go down or have any challenges associated with them. And this development work that's required uh, to be implemented regardless of whatever is going on. So 
uh, it was quite considerable what we did in a really short period of time. So during this period of rapid growth, how did you manage to keep everybody aligned? How do people not end up at each other's throats? And with all of this change going on, all of this new skill, a whole new way of working in a couple of months, and not to mention the majority of, team, of the team hitting the ground running for the first time, how did you do it, Cleo? So Agile has some great events like Stand Up. So um, we would do regular health checks um, or an up and down measurement to see how people were doing. Um, we made sure and agreed that it would be a safe space where there were no dumb questions. With most of the team being new, there were a lot of questions. If we found that something didn't work, then we tried something new. So for example, um, we learned that there's a new way to do stand-ups, um, not the standard three questions, but more of a planning. And we tried it, but people felt like they didn't know what had previously happened and where things were at. So it's great to be able to kind of pivot and um, do what worked for people rather than continuing with what didn't. So superb. So not only did we have all of these people uh, new to the systems, some people new to Agile, the uh, other um, challenge was that a lot of these people were in different locations all around the country and this whole thing had to be done virtually, is that right? That's right, virtually and under COVID read. So, yeah, it's... Big challenge. challenge. Yeah. yeah, but you got there. You absolutely did. So in terms of that, given the nature of the split of the people around the country, uh, how did you manage all the training? What tool set did you use to support you during the flip? So electronic whiteboards like Miro and other collaboration tools such as Jura were really helpful. Um, the entire process was virtual. As a team in multiple locations, we used Microsoft Teams a lot. And because the whole team hadn't started at the same time, we were able to record some of the trainings and meetings and requirement sessions so that people could catch up in their own times and people could replay them as they needed. So there were a lot of online collaboration tools that really helped us be successful. Fantastic. So in terms of the journey, we started this process, uh, as I said, October, November last year. Um, can you describe uh, the journey from your perspective? How did this go? What did you achieve between November and then Sprint Zero and then the first delivery from the first four weekly sprint in, in February? Yeah, so we started with that retro, the normal team forming, events, um, like a social contract. The process started in November in 2021, and the first stage involved a lot of planning. Then as we onboarded the new people, we had to transfer knowledge and work through Agile training. Mm -hmm. Once that was complete, we worked together to agree our definitions of done and ready, um, and practices in line with TWG. So we, sorry, you go. Um, then we set a date for the flip. Yeah. And held your breath and everyone jumped in. Absolutely. It was probably a bit tough for our scrum master because that was day one when he joined us. <laughs> probably wanted a little bit more um, for time. Yeah. But the team worked together to make it work. So I'm really proud of the team just getting it done, keeping the business running, and also pushing forward on the strategic initiatives that we had. Yeah. And not only uh, was Agile new to uh, a lot of the team, it's, this is 
the warehouse flavor of agile as well is that right it's quite specific to the ways of working within the business yeah yes so having those coaches come on board uh to give everyone that uh, initial training was uh really helpful as well so just as a conclusion now that you've done it and you've gotten through and we're all at the other side and everyone's still friends and we're all still smiling uh from your perspective was it worth it and if so what was the best thing to come out of it from your side um yeah it was totally worth it we increased the value that we're giving to the business um in so much as keeping the business running but also working on strategic initiatives it's a lot faster we're delivering monthly at the moment which we never would have been able to do previously the diversity of skills across the team has led to better work in my opinion we used to have big testing documentation to get through and now it's a lot more visual and engaging with our people so not only are we delivering the value we're um making it easier to understand so lots of value there fantastic and you said something earlier to me actually today that I really loved that you've you've seen a shift in the people involved through this process um you so can you just tell everyone share with everyone if you're comfortable what you meant by that in terms of um and the shift in mindset from the teams yeah previously it was getting agreement from a whole lot of stakeholders um making sure the upstream and downstream effects were understood totally and now we are a bit more um focused on the value and quicker to respond so um we deliver the value quickly but in smaller chunks and that allows our stakeholders to really see them and get the value quite early in the process rather than having the requirements um like fully understood and fleshed out so we've got a little bit of test and learn in there which is exciting fantastic and you were seeing people start to think a bit more creatively as well and start to think about instead of um sort of a yes or no absolute answer is more about a problem solving type of approach and how might we do this and um, you attribute that to the agile methodology as well and the way of working yeah and to the trust of the team like understanding each other and um with the user story you were able to see the value that you're trying to deliver and there might be other ways to do that that are faster or better and just having the confidence to explore that is quite awesome to see cuz we've got to another like a couple of better solutions than what people have asked for oh that's really interesting yeah um sometimes the whole is definitely greater than some of the parts that's for sure um and so i can see uh, this example of a four weekly release schedule this is the pace that we're working at now which is four times what it was previously and it's really exciting to see that come through so we know uh at jade that we're delivering this phenomenal value and we can all be proud and uh, work together uh, and um get get this journey to an end so essentially we came from four people last october uh to 18 people now growing the team at uh, two separate teams working in a completely different way of working and we have rapidly increased the value that we're delivering to this wonderful client so uh this was a massive change for everyone involved and we are so proud of how everybody responded we continue to evolve together in this new agile world moving forward which allows us to de- deliver more value to the business much faster than we've ever been able to do previously so if you were ever wondering how do i quadruple a team completely change the methodology to a new way of working and rapidly increase the output well that's how you do it players us thank you so much from the warehouse group back to you neil
Thanks, Cleo. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, look, I'm, I'm going to ask if uh, anyone in the audience has a few questions. But meanwhile, I'm going to pose a couple. Um, you've talked a lot about changing the culture of the team and, and moving the team. However, a uh, software team like this never works in isolation. You must have also dealt with a lot of uh, the interfaces between the team and the business must have changed as well. Uh, how did you bring all those business stakeholders along with you on the journey? So we're quite lucky at the Warehouse Group, the entire organisation did the flip. So people were quite familiar with the cadence of sprints. Um, it was also aligning because they had to deliver things within their sprints as well. So they're quite responsive to um, the changes and um, the things that we had to change. So, yeah, that's how. Okay, and uh, look, a journey like this never really ends. You've got the first phase under your belt, but what comes next? What does the future hold over the next 12 months or whatever horizon you can envisage? So we do have a roadmap, which is what we intend to deliver. Lots of changes. Um, yeah, so we've got strategic goals to get done, but also Agile leaves us more responsive to when things change. We can change sprint by sprint um, according to business priority. So it was exciting when that happened a couple of weeks ago and we were already testing the results of that. So definitely more responsive, delivering the highest value work rather than waiting to the end to see what happens. Hmm. And look, any, any change like this, uh, it, it always amazes me that a lot of people that work in the technology game really change first. Some would have heard me say this before, but we bring about change for other people, but actually a lot of uh, technical people aren't very, don't like change themselves. You, you must have encountered some resistance initially, I'm sure, without giving too much away. What, what was the nature of that resistance and how, how did you overcome it and bring people along on the journey? Um, at the beginning, it was really hard. People were expecting requirements, documents, and a lot of documentation. There was much less with the user story, and it was much more of a conversation. And I think you understand people a lot better when you're having that conversation. So, yes, there were some people who didn't like it, that wanted to put process around conversations and things. But it's just acknowledging that, um, reassuring that we're on the right path and, and trusting, and trusting to get things wrong as well. We're going to get things wrong. We're going to learn. We're going to move forward um, as a team. And, and it's an iterative thing, right? And if you listen to people and their concerns along the way, you can feed that back in. And as long as you're doing retros and the like, then then that's a way to improve things for all. There's yes, a question so from... Seeing things change, like, as soon as a retro is fixed, like, straight after a retro, having things fixed, I, I think that's very valuable. Yeah. Well, if people, typically, if people can see the results and see them relatively quickly, then they'll come along with the journey. Uh, so there's a couple of questions here in the chat, one from John Edwards. You've obviously increased productivity and increased staffing levels. What, what proportion do you think of that productivity increase came from agile ways of working and, and what was due to increasing the size of the team? I think that a lot of the productivity is gained in letting people do what they do minimizing the distractions so we set you know the sprint goal and that's the goal until the end of the sprint so i do attribute quite a lot of the productivity increase to the agile ways of working 
And remembering that more than half of the team are new employees. So usually with new employees, you notice the dip, but actually we got more productive, delivered more value, and the quality increased in so much that we could communicate those changes in quite a visual way. So you talked a little bit about um, the the warehouse group approach to agile. Can you give us some clues as to how that differs from traditional Scrum or things that others in the audience might might understand? What tweaks have you made to things to make it work for you? Um, it's interesting. There's a lot more planning outside. So we've got the big room planning where you kind of get the top down information about um, goals for the quarter and longer. Um, but you've also got the small room planning. So we kind of switch from quarter to qu quarter what we take from the team and from top down um, yeah, as well as, I'm not sure what I can share. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's quite different. I suppose the, the methodology is driven by the adult coaches internally, we just sort of follow their lead, but in terms of how that compares, it's an interesting question, maybe something we can research for you. Okay, and what about, what would you do differently next time? I'm sure if you reflect, if you do a retro on the whole process you, you could identify a few things that you wish you'd done more of less of uh, differently can you share some of that yeah I feel co-location is great to understand people and what they want so if possible I'd want to get the team together at the beginning to learn and understand each other um, sometimes the technology let us down so always test the technology first and um, try and avoid doing a project like this in a global pandemic, if that's an option. If we could do that, that'd be quite nice. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. Yeah. Um, well, it's obviously been quite a significant cultural shift for the team and, and the whole of the warehouse group. And doing that with a bunch of people working remotely does inevitably make things a little bit harder. Um, switching yeah. business as usual to working online and remotely is hard enough. Introducing yeah. a significant change like this, doubly so. And we're actually only getting our first full room with all the teams together at the end of May this week from trying to organise that since last October. So we're all very excited. We're actually going to be able to meet in person uh, at the end of May and celebrate the achievement because it has been significant and we're all really proud of what's happened here. So uh, to be able to get together and celebrate that, I think it you know, would have been nice to do that a lot earlier uh, and thank everyone for all of their for being so open and uh, taking that plunge, taking that leap, having the faith uh, to jump into this wholeheartedly, which our entire team did. It was a case of kind of feel the fear and do it anyway, as when you've been doing something in the same way for more than two decades. Uh, and bear in mind as well, this, this change wasn't brought about because things weren't working. Uh, they were doing their job and it was working really well. But the thing was, we wanted to do more faster and in a different way so we had to move to the agile methodology to achieve that um, so we really want to thank everyone involved and we're finally finally going to be doing that together in Dunedin in May. Well I, I hope you're getting some recognition from the business that, that I'm sure they're seeing uh, things substantially different and being able to execute on changes that they want much more swiftly than you were able to previously it must be quite quite a boon for them. Any more questions from everyone? Are we going to wrap up relatively early? Come on, audience, don't be shy. Oh, who's the noisy one? Yeah. 
No, everybody's gone quiet. How about that? So, so your team, where are they, where are they distributed? Are they in various warehouse offices or have you got people working from home still these days? We have people working from the warehouse office in Auckland. Well, people working uh, virtually in Auckland, from the Jade offices in Auckland, from the Jade offices in Dunedin, from the Jade offices in Christchurch, and then people still working from home. So we've got little dots all over the country uh, who are coming together uh, in Dunedin on the 23rd and 24th of May for uh, yeah, the first time ever to actually see each other in, in person. Right, well, I hope that goes well. Uh, and look, I think we're going to call that a day. All the questions have dried up. So I, I'm just going to say thank you to Cleo and Sharon for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for having us. And to our audience, uh, tune in a couple of weeks' time for the next of these with Greg. I know uh, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Wrap. Bye.